Welcome to Hello City. Today is a special episode. We're highlighting Pink October. And today is also a special episode because I have two distinguished guests. I have two amazing surgeons here at um, MediClinic. Dr. Veronica, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Veronica Grassi, and I'm a consultant oncoplastic breast surgeon working at MediClinic City Hospital. Thank you Thank for you being for here. Of course. And Dr. Rabia, can you introduce yourself? Thank you, Dr. Saja. I'm Dr. Rabia Fan. I'm a consultant breast surgeon working at MediClinic City Hospital. Dr. Veronica, first question. Could you please give our listeners a brief overview of what Pink October is all about and um, how, is that of, um, how is that significant in relationship to breast cancer awareness? Right. So Pink October is a global campaign that, as the name says, uh, takes place in the month of October with the aim to raise awareness on breast cancer. Uh, this campaign actually highlights the importance of uh, education, mm -hmm. of uh, early detection, but also supports those patients who have breast cancer and the survivors. Uh, I would say uh, that um, the significance of uh, this uh, particular campaign is uh, the ability of uh, involving not only, I'd say, individuals, uh, but uh, also entire entire communities to spread uh, uh, breast cancer awareness and um, uh, the symbol of uh, this campaign is uh, the pink ribbon mm -hmm. that represents actually support for uh, uh, the women who had breast cancer the survivors but uh, um, it is also a reminder uh, to all women uh, to take active and proactive steps towards their breast, their breast health. Excellent. You look amazing today with the pink. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, Dr. Ovia, I have a question now. How has Pink October evolved um, over the years and what impact has it been um, on raising awareness for breast cancer? Yes, I think from the last couple of years, we have seen and noticed an increasing trend of women coming for uh, screening. Uh, earlier, we used to see that oh, if there is nothing wrong, and if I have no symptoms, I don't have to go and see a doctor. Sure. But because of all these awareness campaigns, and I would say all over the world, not only us, all uh, healthcare professionals, um, we try to focus a lot on uh, breast health and breast cancer awareness campaign because the the beauty of uh, this campaign is that early detection saves life. Uh, because of all this screening, we get to identify and pick up early breast cancers and stage zero cancers when patients cannot even feel the cancers. Mm -hmm. And that's how the survival and the prognosis have improved the outcomes uh, related to breast cancer. Sure, sure. And Dr. Veronica, could you share some facts or statistics about um, breast cancer that um, our listeners may not know about? Yeah. So first of all, it's worth mentioning that uh, one in eight women will have uh, breast cancer, will be diagnosed with breast cancer during their lifetime. Wow. And uh, um, we all know that breast cancer is the first cancer in the female population, but actually not everybody knows that also men can have breast cancer. In fact, uh, almost 1% of all breast cancer are present in the male population. Also, as Dr. Robia was mentioning, it is uh, very important uh, that uh, all women attend screening, because if you attend regularly a screening, you have at least uh, 47% less chance of dying uh, with okay. breast cancer rather than the normal population. Um, interesting fact, first uh, mastectomy ever was performed uh, back uh, in the 1500s wow. on uh, uh, Theodora, who was the uh, emperor of uh, uh, the Byzantine. Did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. And uh, um, another important thing is that the majority of uh, uh, breast cancer, uh, thanks to the progress of research and treatments, are uh, now uh, detected early and therefore treated. 90% um, in fact of uh, all patients uh, diagnosed with breast cancer are alive after five years. 
and 99% of patients with, uh, in, let's say, um, a disease which is localized mainly in the breast are alive after five years. So you can see here that really screening is a very important uh, tool for us to have to detect cancer early. Um, another important fact, and uh, uh, I think is uh, worth mentioning, is that uh, five to ten percent of breast cancer are hereditary. So that means that uh, uh, there's a genetic mutation inherited by one of the parents that promotes the cancer. Uh, the majority of the cancer, otherwise, uh, are due to genetic mutation, which are multifactorial, yes. and uh, so environmental uh, diet can contribute to these mutations. I see. I see, Dr. Rabia, I have an, uh, a question for you. So, could you highlight some of the initiatives that are done with Pink October, and how can um, other individuals get involved with those? That's actually a very good question because this is what we need, a lot of support, especially um, for all the women who are breast cancer survivors. I think the education starts from there. If you have a colleague, if you have friends, families, you need to encourage them to come for screening. People should not get scared of screening and going to see the doctor. So whoever have been diagnosed or whoever have been to screening, they need to, it's a word of mouth, Dr. Saja, it's a word of mouth that my friend will recommend me, okay, I went for screening, you should also. So we should all support each other and encourage each other to go for screening, especially if the, the husbands, the males also from the home, from, from your home itself, you should encourage your wives, your mothers, your sisters to go for screening and get a check done. It's not only for women. I think it, we need support from our uh, male population as well to, uh, to just promote this, you know? Sure, sure. And Dr. Veronica, um, so what steps can an individual take to prevent breast cancer? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question because I always say to my patient that uh, breast awareness it shouldn't be only in October, it should be every month. Right. In fact, it all starts uh, actually with uh, uh, the self uh, breast examination, mm -hmm. which actually should be performed uh, uh, on a monthly basis. Um, I'd say five, seven days after the periods. Uh, so that the patient becomes uh, confident uh, about her breast and she knows uh, how her breast looks and feels. So um, if there are any changes, she's able to detect them and then come to the specialist uh, for further assessment. Another thing that, of course, is very important uh, is uh, attending uh, regular checkups mm -hmm. as per doctor advises and uh, uh, screening. Mm -hmm. And now screening has been introduced here in UAE in 2015, and uh, um, it's uh, um, um, every two years. Um, the new guidelines, though, uh, say that uh, it's better to uh, have annual mammograms and ultrasound scan from the age of 40, because at least 95% of breast cancer are diagnosed after that age. And last but not least, uh, I'd say, and I keep it last because to me it's very important as well, is uh, promoting um, a very good health uh, lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle is, uh, let's say, very important because um, uh, diet, uh, keeping the um, body uh, weight balanced, um, avoiding uh, smoking, avoiding alcohol, and uh, uh, moreover, uh, performing uh, um, actively exercises at least 30 minutes a day um, for five days a week, mm -hmm. mostly aerobic. Mm -hmm. This aerobic activity will decrease risk of breast cancer of around 30%. Excellent. Dr. Rabia, is there any misconception about a breast cancer that uh, Pink October can address? 
Yes, there are many misconceptions and we always talk about the myths because uh, that's the general uh, woman uh, thinking that, okay, everybody get to see these questions in the in the clinic very often. Okay, if I put the deodorants, so will I get breast cancer? Mm -hmm. Wearing a wired bra, wearing a black bra. Yeah, <laughs> these are very common misconceptions that uh, um, if I have uh, nobody in my family, I don't need to get this screening done. I have no complaints, so I cannot have a breast cancer and I don't need to go for a checkup. My last year mammogram was clear, so I don't need to repeat that. So we still see a lot of these type of questions in our everyday clinic, which we try to address during the month of October. These are all myths. They have no medical uh, uh, logic behind that uh, people can easily use the deodorants. You, can, you have to do a mammogram every year, regardless of your last Last year mammogram was okay because things can change in one year so um uh, yes there are a lot of misconceptions that we, sure. we we try to address uh, in the month of october and and it's getting improved it's getting improved women are more educated now they know that okay we we have to come whether there is a complaint or no so it's getting better and i'm sure that with these awareness campaigns we will make it excellent excellent dr veronica the last question now um, could you um, just give us some insight on the um, advancement in research and treatment when it comes to breast cancer? Yes, indeed. So uh, during the past few years, I'd say during the past decades, uh, there have been huge and huge improvements um, in the treatment of breast cancer. Um, new medication came available uh, in the market that targeted specifically breast cancer cells and uh, they are less effective on normal cells. And this improves the efficacy uh, of the treatment and definitely reduce uh, the side effects, uh, which is a, a very important part of the treatment, especially uh, chemotherapy. Um, we not, in, whereas in the past, uh, uh, breast cancer was treating only one way, uh, now we know that uh, uh, we have at least uh, four types of breast cancer and actually, uh, the biology of the cancer is very important for the treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, I see so many women come in to me and they say, my sister had this type of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. She had a mastectomy and chemotherapy, whereas why I don't have the same treatment? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because you have a different cancer. Wow. And uh, uh, so the treatment more and more becomes uh, actually tailored to the breast cancer biology but also is tailored to the patient wishes, sizes, breast anatomy. Um, another important uh, um, tool in the market with the post, let's say recent uh, process of uh, uh, genetics, uh, there are uh, tools available on the market that can predict whether or not a patient will benefit from chemotherapy. Again, whereas in the past uh, for triple negative, oh, sorry, for uh, grade three cancer, anyone could have a Chemo chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. Now we have uh, tools, uh, I don't know if I can say, because I don't want people to decide, but uh, uh, available uh, that can predict the recurrence score, and therefore chemotherapy is only given if uh, there is an effective uh, benefit for the patient. Uh, so I'd say more and more um, breast cancer treatment uh, um, becomes tailored to the cancer, to the patient, uh, and uh, I think we need to keep it on with research, yes. spreading breast cancer awareness uh, to improve uh, the treatment even further. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for joining us in our Pink October podcast episode as we navigated those stories of strength against breast cancer. Stay tuned till next episode.